I was always interested in continuing to build, to create. So I built the company that I want to work in. A company that's focused on helping the world get the best out of blockchain. Many people here believe that this new wave of technologies can actually help by bringing a technological backstop to the power accumulation um, that we're seeing with in services like Facebook and, and, and Google. And now for the first time we can use tech to actually address social problems in a much more fundamental way. Like, not just applying mass to do statistics, but like applying mass to um, help that we don't have to put so much trust in services online. We have, I think, the best team in, in the ecosystem. So we don't use other people's technology, we, we create our own. And much of what we do is, if not strictly research, it's certainly substantial innovation. So we, we take research grade material and we turn ideas into products. What I'm trying to do is to make Polkadot work in theory as well as practice. Uh, and our job is to make sure that the protocols are actually secure and scalable. Uh, so blockchain, it's, it's kind of an adversarial environment. You can have something, you can deploy it, it can work in practice, and then someone can find something which completely breaks it. Then we kind of know that this block could be finalized. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you think of all the possibilities, you come up with one that works, we discuss it with, with, with other researchers, we you know, try and poke holes or, or think of new ideas to improve it. Uh, once we think we've got something good, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking to developers. And every now and again, us and various people from Parity will, will, will have you know, some sort of retreat and we'll get around to Blackboard and discuss all the open problems in Polkadot. I was a cryptocurrency hobbyist for a few years. I was pretty big into Bitcoin. I heard some stuff about Ethereum. I was also programming in a language called Rust. So when I saw that there was a company called Parity, which is working on cryptocurrency in Rust, it kind of hit the sweet spot for me. So I packed a suitcase and I haven't really been back much since. They certify the parachain statements at the prior block, but it's not really finality. It's, but we need the real finality. We have finality when something exits the fisherman period, or which once it's once it's gone through both. It's been crazy, but it's been great. The team is some really bright people, and I'm learning things about mathematics or about consensus that I never really would have considered before. I think it's pretty good that we're applying it in a way that's not purely academic, that actually seems to be something that can enact change in the world around us. We want to build decentralized applications that will provide great user experience and functionality. In this new space, we have a lot of, a lot of things are already being built, so there is a lot of components out there. But they're all very, very disjointed. So many teams are working in separation, so uh, rather than building on top of each other's uh, technology, they kind of reinvent every time the, the whole stack from scratch. There has been a lot of uh, uh, focus on just the protocols without thinking how they will be used in the end by the, by the end users. In order to better coordinate ourselves, we need some sort of framework that will allow us to better see how they fit together. We built not only Polkadot, the Polkadot blockchain, but we also built, um, you know, a good blockchain framework for creating new blockchains. And in my mind, Substrate was always really key for Polkadot being successful. Polkadot, you might think of it as like a token or a blockchain, but actually what's very important is that Polkadot as an ecosystem has a really good, at least one, really good um, framework for building new blockchains because Polkadot's only going to be successful if it's got a lot of successful blockchains working within it. A 
I joined Parod right about the time of Web3 Summit last year. I hadn't moved to Berlin yet, but、uh, I was watching on the computer in California, and I watched Gaz's presentation on a rustic vision for Polkadot. We can construct the runtime. We just basically list all of these modules here. It was during this talk that he described that Polkadot is his biggest bet against blockchain maximalism, towards a vision of a multi-chain future. Substrate provides you with all of the core components you need to build a blockchain. Things like a database, networking, a transaction queue, consensus engine, and even a library of runtime modules. And the runtime is the thing that actually describes what the transactions do, how the blockchain. So the runtime, technically speaking, is the state transition function of that blockchain. It means that it defines the rules that are legal, basically, from one block transition to the next block. So like how the state can literally transition.、Um, but kind of more practically speaking, it's the brains of the blockchain. It's basically a bunch of、um, applications and utilities and things that it knows how to do. What's so exciting about this platform is that you can go ahead and design your own runtime modules, and we actually envision that this module library might become like a larger app ecosystem, where there'll be developers building all these open source runtime modules, and you as a blockchain developer can just pick and choose the different functionality and logic that you want to add to your blockchain and just put it in there and launch your chain. I'll give you an example here. There's this balances module. Balances module basically describes the functionality of a cryptocurrency on this blockchain. If you want to build a smart contract platform, you just need to add the contracts module. And so, really, what I'm trying to tell you is that it's never been easier than today to be able to build a blockchain. With Substrate, you can literally build a blockchain in minutes. Substrate is powered by WebAssembly in terms of how the logic of the blockchain is encoded, and that's actually how Polkadot's. Logic of parachains is encoded, so it could serve as a very useful launching-off point for parachains to be added to the Polkadot network, and that's huge for us because、uh, a lot of parachain developers are specialists in specific fields like machine learning. So, providing something like Substrate where they can just get going and start hacking on their machine learning or data science specific expertise、uh, was massively helpful. So what Substrate gives us is this little toolbox. So it doesn't matter if you are the relay chain like Kusama or Polkadot, or if you are a parachain、um, that's connecting to these relay chains, or if you are your own chain running somewhere on your own. If you want to make changes or add modules or add features, you know you can go for an upgrade process as long as you get、um, go for governance, which in your case might be council or technical. Committee and a democracy, like we've got in Kusama and Polkadot.、Um, some chains have only got technical committees.、Um, some chains might decide to have、uh, a god-like pseudo power, you know. But through these mechanisms, you can actually schedule upgrades. Polkadot evolved over time、um, as a, I mean, initially an idea of like how to make it scalable and then how to make it、um, easier to. Develop for developers. I mean, a, a bunch of the principles that Gav laid out in in the Polkadot paper,、um, and then basically what we learned along the way,、um, in particular around the governance. The DAO was a pretty decisive moment, like for everybody. Like until then, there always was this tenet of like, code is law. First of all, like anything that's written on a blockchain should like never be, never be questioned. And how you deal with controversy. In in the ecosystem was one of the key things that led us to believe there is a need for governance because hard fork just means the splitting of communities、um, and that can't be the answer to a controversy. Like you need to bring people together and this is how you how you how you do this by establishing an explicit way of doing governance. You know, it's really exciting. It's software gets built. Features gets added, it gets audited. Somebody in council proposes this this upgrade, goes through council process, goes through democracy process, and it just now it sounds like work, <laughs> but it's it's actually magic that sits behind it.、Um, the fact that you can actually make these changes and like all of a sudden, all around the world where these nodes are running, they from the one block to the next, they're running different versions of the software. It's It's really cool. So we're used these days to seamless upgrades. When we have an app on our phones, like we just click a button, three seconds, and it's done. But the user experience of a hard fork is something you can't sell to anyone if they are like reliant on an application. And so, also from that perspective, like governance is to us like the answer of how to deal with a problem of、um, software obsolescence and and upgrading.
So in Polkadot, we care about bridges. We care about uh, other blockchains, like say Ethereum. Um, if we want to sort of communicate between them, uh, and we have the trouble that they have different consensus systems. But because they're both capable of doing logic, what you want to do is, is, is say, can we prove to Ethereum that this is what's going on in Polkadot? So, so Grandpa, it's a finality gadget. It, it provides a, a mechanism to get, to get something which is signed by two thirds of validators. And if we can show that, then we can, we can show that this is the thing that happened on Polkadot. So Grandpa is like a, a kind of Byzantine agreement thing to finalize any block. It absolutely has to pass, have two thirds of people voting for it at some point. One of the things about working in something more the, the theory end before is I, I'd prove something and we, we'd write a paper and it would be amazing and, and no one would ever use it. So here I, I, I can come up with something new like, like Grandpa and, 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 and prove, just prove it works and then within a month Rob, Rob Pavlovich came along and started coding it. Um, and now it's in, in deployment uh, used by systems in the real world. It, it's not magic, it, it, it's maths and uh, crazy cryptographic assumptions. But it works. For the specification, we, we don't care about how databases have to be. The context of blockchain is still one that is innovating. We're still very slowly climbing up the ladder of sort of comprehension as to how it's going to affect things and how business and enterprise and indeed the economy of the world will change around it. We can compare it to the days of the computer as the computer progressed through the 80s and the 90s. It was very difficult to keep things compatible from one computer to the next. It means that newcomers to it don't want to invest too much in the current generation because they knew that the next generation is just around the corner and it will massively um, uh, devalue and uh, undermine any of their investment in the current generation. We don't need to make that trade-off between innovation and adoption. With Polkadot, we can have both because we can have um, parachains, these independent blockchains under Polkadot, and if we want to innovate, we can add new independent chains that can still interoperate with the older variants. It means that there's an upgrade path so that when the next generation, the latest and greatest, comes along, there's a way that you can move over to it, there's a way that you can use it. You're not stuck out in the cold on your previous generation. Really, this is it's 1969 and we're trying to land on the moon here. There's this huge early, early, uh, early technology, very, very difficult. Let's zoom out and look at the, kind of the big picture. What do you think are the real advantages of decentralization? We all, I mean, who of you has had their data stolen or, um, or leaked at yeah, some point? Totally. So, I mean, this is really, this, these issues will become much bigger and what we hope to build is basically the infrastructure for, for having a much safer um, decentral web. Damn it. I think this is one of the reasons why Bitcoin actually sort of was, was, was a real zeitgeist yeah. in that, you know, people felt at least the technologically minded ones, but I think increasingly um, more sort of um, uh, uh, sort of mainstream people are, are of the opinion that they don't need to trust the central bank or politicians um, or systems that are fairly obscure and, and, and opaque. They can actually use something that is more or less the same as the cash in their pocket or, or the notion of gold. That I think is 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 part of the. Um, the whole sort of notion of blockchain and crypto and what it's delivering. Decentralization is sort of a means of delivering it. So it's going to be an interesting, um, an interesting five or ten years. I'm very excited about what Gav is working on. I've known Gav for a long time and I, I think he's just one of the great minds in the space. If we, uh, if we head to uh, the part of the code base, we are a diversified investment fund that invests exclusively in blockchain protocols. We manage $200 million, um, and we have backing from Andreessen Horowitz, Sequoia Capital, Union Square Ventures, and the Founders Fund, among others. I think that for the first time, there's enough users broadly in the cryptocurrency space to start making smart contract-based businesses viable. I think we're going to see more and more decentralized corporate structures where capital can be coordinated from all around the world using blockchains 
And that whole new kind of financial system is all totally interoperable, permissionless, and extensible. Once we get to scalable systems that can handle the kind of traffic that you might see on a service like Facebook, um, then we can start building those user-facing applications and financial services that actually are very useful for the average person. The reason that I'm so interested in cryptocurrency as an investor is that to me, um, a lot of the work here is bootstrapping monetary systems from zero um, in a totally open source way. Um, where it's, it's opt-in and interoperable and permissionless, so anyone can build anything they'd like. Um, to me, if it plays out the way I think many of us in this room think it will, um, it's likely to be the greatest investment opportunity um, humanity will see in this era, um, definitely in my lifetime. There are maybe something like 15 million users of, say, Bitcoin. If you start a new blockchain in a pre-Polkadot world, you have to um, get those users to like opt into your new blockchain in order to gain that functionality. In the post Polkadot world, what will be possible is for that blockchain to immediately um, tap into that user base of an existing blockchain. This just means that new ideas can scale much, much faster. It almost uh, facilitates a sort of exponential growth curve. The ecosystem is developing really nicely. We got like a 250 projects in the way, 100 teams building chains and substrate, um, and about half of those are, are trying to get a parachain slot. The idea of Polkadot is the one that facilitates other projects, other teams, other chains to do as much that they can as possible without Polkadot getting in the way. Operating independently, but able to communicate with each other. Celebrating the fact that there are many chains rather than trying to force everything in under one chain, one economy. I think that's probably the most powerful bit of ethos that Polkadot has.